Hello and welcome back. Today we have on the bench two uh, Colt Model 1911 A1s that just went through a nice detailed strip all the way down to the frame. Now these two uh, Colt Model 1911 A1s, this one was made in 1943 and this is a 1944 production. Both of these pistols were part of the Lend Lease policy of World War II. And for those of you not familiar with Lend Lease, I just wanted to do a very brief history. In July of 1940, uh, Britain lost 11 destroyers to the German Navy over a 10-day period, and uh, Churchill requested help from Roosevelt. And Roosevelt responded by exchanging 50 destroyers for 99-year leases on British bases in the Caribbean and in Newfoundland. Now, this resulted in a major foreign policy debate on whether the U.S. should A, Great Britain, or maintain strict neutrality. And in January 1941, after being re-elected, Roosevelt proposed to Congress a new military aid bill, and the plan was to lend lease or otherwise dispose of arms and other supplies needed by any country whose security was vital to the defense of the United States. And it was signed into law on March 11th, 1941, and it supplied billions of dollars in aid to Great Britain, the Soviet Union, China, France, and other allied nations. And although it did not formally establish the United States as a combatant in World War II, it ended any pretense of neutrality. And because of this, uh, Hitler ordered U-boats to attack U.S. shipping vessels. And uh, Lynn Lease was a critical factor in the success of the Allies during World War II as approximately a quarter of uh, British musician, munitions came through Lend Lease. Now let's take a closer look at our pistols. We'll start with the 1943 here. Now this one here is a renumbered commercial model and as you can see the uh, commercial numbers were removed and hopefully I can get in here enough to where you can see there we can actually see a little bit of reflection where the grind mark runs along here where they ground down the commercial number and removed it and re-stamped it with the proper uh, military numbers at that point in time. And then oh, the other thing I wanted to show you while I was on this is we have the uh, stamp that says not English make right here and uh, hopefully you can see that. It's hard to, rather hard to read. And then um, from there uh, this pistol went through the London proof house as it has the uh, V for the view proof here, here, and right here on the first mark on the barrel and then we have the CP here and then we have the nitro proof here which were all uh, typical of the London proof house there and then while we're looking at these marks on this we're going to move over here to the other side and look at some of the US marks we have a GHD right here and that's for uh, Brigadier General Guy H. Dury, Springfield Ordnance District, uh, Army Inspector of Ordnance from June of 1942 through uh, July of 1945. And then we're going to go ahead and flip this over and look at the final inspection mark, which is right here. Now that's the Ordnance Cross Cannons. And as you can see, it didn't stamp on there 100%, but you can still see it's there. Now, that was adopted in October of 1942 and used through the remainder of the war. And um, that came on at approximately serial number uh, 830,000. And while we're looking at these pistols, we'll go ahead and look at a couple of variations of sights. We have a revision 4 sight on this 1943 and then over here on this one we have the revision 6 site and uh, this revision was adopted by all the rest of the contractors during World War II. Colt originated it and it just helped uh, make it uh, machining a little bit better a little bit quicker a little bit less expensive and then we'll move on to the front site from here and here you can see this front site on the 1943 and then the front sight on the 1944. Now the fr uh, front sight on the 1943 is a little bit more narrow and it has that half moon shape. Now this other front sight was approved on April 2nd of 1942 and hopefully I'll be able to get in here close enough that you can see the serrations or the corrugation on the front of this. And we'll see here, I'll try to zoom in. So maybe, there we go, you can see that now. So this is actually textured and uh, 
it's kind of round in the front, but then it's got that definite sloped angle in the back there. So a couple of variations in sights at that point in time. And then we'll go ahead and zoom back out. Sorry for the camera work there, guys and ladies. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll move on to the hammers. Now, these both have the Colt uh, wide spur short hammers and you can see it has these flanges on the side that you won't see on a lot of other pistols uh, hammers uh, other manufacturers during World War II and then um, now we'll go ahead and we'll look at these mainspring housings while we're comparing the two pistols this is the early Colt mainspring housing on this side and then this is the late Ithaca Colt mainspring housing on this side. And this was a subcontract from uh, uh, Cayuga Motors, and they made uh, these for both Colt and Ithaca. Now let's go ahead and look at the roll markings on these. And here we can see on this 1944 pistol that we have the roll markings that has the uh, Colt, rampant Colt here. But this, this one here you can see really lacks a lot of detail. This is often referred to as the uh, stick horse because it just it lacks the detail that uh, was in the earlier Colt uh, logos there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll finish up with this uh, 1944 pistol and we'll look at the British proofs on this. Now this one went through the Birmingham proof house here you can see the uh, ordnance stamp is a little bit fuller on this one. They almost got the whole thing on there. But we'll move over here and we'll look at the BNP. This is a British Nitro Proof. And then we have the crossed scepters for the uh, British, uh, or excuse me, for the Birmingham Proof House. And then we have the other uh, Birmingham Nitro Proof here. The Birmingham Nitro Proof again right here. And then we have the caliber designation, or the barrel, actually it's the barrel dimension in, uh, in uh, inches. And then we have the cartridge length, nine-tenths of an inch. And then we have down here the, uh, what's called the pressure of the proof charge in long tons per square inch. And this is seven tons per square inch. And then that uh, pretty much takes care of the British proof marks on these two pistols. Go ahead and zoom back out here. And you can see, of course, both of these pistols are Parkerized. So there you have two really nice examples of uh, 19, or excuse me, of uh, World War II British Lynn lease Colt model 1911A1s. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this short video on these two uh, historic pistols. And uh, thanks for tuning in and watching, and have a great day.